All right. Well, happy Thanksgiving, universe. Hope your poultry-infused festival of gluttony was successful. Mine? Well, let's just say sources not so sure. Wait, was that on the Magic 8-Ball? Wait, should I even be saying things on the Magic 8-Ball, or will Hasbro be going, Yo, bro, no cool. Don't be hasbro on the Hasbro 8-Ball. Okay, well, I guess I could go hit that kitchen sink, but shit, after hitting the Cindy 99 plus the purple train wreck, do I really need to? <laughs> it's Thanksgiving, of course I do. This is all about gluttony. Yeah, I'm glad I remembered I was doing this. I got sidetracked there for a second, but I'll be back. Wait, did that interjection just belittle my purpose here? I mean, my purpose does not need belittling, so that interjection was strictly a uh, time-space reality hiccup of, whoo, the recording is still going. Pause button still working. <clears throat> well, all right. Having seen Cindy 99 fall into my kitchen sink, well, I banished them both to a vaporization of space-time no more reality in this continuum. I mean, I guess they're still in reality because they're affecting my space-time and my continuum. Shall we go on? <clears throat> okay. The oh-so-concocted <clears throat> um, routine pedestrian concept of 200 headlines I would not be all that shocked to wake up to if I saw them in my Facebook newsfeed tomorrow. Well, that part would surprise me because that would mean I'd have a Facebook page. So that would mean, what, the CIA put a Facebook page together, then got into my newsfeed these headlines? Let's be honest, that would surprise the shit out of me. And would make me one paranoid motherfucker. So let's hope that doesn't happen. I don't think it's going to, nor should you, nor does anybody really. If you want to spend another millisecond thinking about that, maybe a nanosecond, but not a millisecond. So moving on, <clears throat> I've done the first 65... Yeah. So 64 through number one are left. And I threw a bonus one in here because I figure I must have duplicated something and just not noticed it. So I'll throw that on top just for the one that I was like, oh yeah, I did talk about Pizzagate twice. Well, this doesn't count. 64. Uh... <clears throat> Everything fell into ruins in the 18th century. Oh. Or the 17th century. I mean, God, they just oh, they fucked with the timeline so much. But it does seem like there was some big old dump of mud on third planet Terra three or four hundred years ago. Evidence is everywhere if you look for it. I don't recommend you go looking for it, to be honest. It's very unsettling to have to figure out what the fuck that could be. So, rather than sitting on 64, like a Beatles song... Were the Beatles real? Come on, Paul McCartney's not fake, right? Paul McCartney's not on this list anywhere. I have 200 chances to include him, and I didn't even include him. Now when I could put... Corporate America decides they've squeezed us enough. <laughs> I don't, I, I, this might be proof of demonic possession. Because there's like seven of these that there's no way the CIA would let through. Let alone, like, corporate America is going to stop squeezing us. <laughs> they've just squeezed every bit of juice out of us. They haven't even started grinding away at the rind. The burnt skin of the crust of a once thought possible existence that is now just clock in, clock out, and hope you don't get injured. 62. Fuck yeah, reparations. All right, fuck. As a white dude who doesn't even own a pair of Bluetooth headphones, because I've lost six of them in the last seven months. 
I got nothing. But huh, I've always felt reparations are due. And it's everybody. Hell, I even think reparations are due women. White dudes have basically cheated the game in every way possible. So, what levels a playing field against an opponent who's cheated you the whole time you've played them? Other than destruction of said opponent. Which I kind of understand. So fuck yeah, reparations. Thought that my whole life. Men crying on each other's shoulders voted oddly comforting. All right, I don't actually expect this headline ever to emerge. No one does. Because we have sold male emotion into the quandary of pussydom and weakness. And not for this guy... And I've never even seen that in a movie, so it can't even be real. Whatever you want to say about it, male emotional exposure is vulnerability at a level most men are terrified to go to. Me included. It took me 50 years to finally get comfortable with my emotions. That is a long fucking time. I hope it doesn't take men of other upcoming generations as long as you will see me repeat over and over that's what repeat means emotions are the strength of who you are in this reality the human body and its ability to generate emotional energy is the magic so when 61 men crying on each other's shoulders voted oddly comforting is a headline well i believe that will prove we've transcended as a species but what will 60 bring us i don't know because i don't know where i wrote it i did this stupid thing where i put like certain milestones where i thought oh these should be interesting because i think i've seen that in other lists stupidly that means i don't know what 60 is where the hell is 60 Sixty, where'd you go? Oh, I bet you're on the back side of this page. Bam! Sixty is. Oh, the pole shifts are coming. The one calamity that does look like it's actually occurring in real time, like we are about to see it happen months from now. <clears throat> is the magnetic, magnetic flip of the pole. This, to me, is so coincidentally timed, it's hard to believe this isn't the calamity on the horizon. Because if the poles can literally shift, huh, what does that do to our magnetic, the magnetosphere that protects us from solar radiation, incoming solar radiation, for one? What does it do to the harmonic balance of the magnetic uh, energy of the Earth, number two? And, God forbid, we don't quite understand plate tectonics, and there is some huh, skin of the rind of the orange phenomenon that can shift things radically. Well, maybe this is why my better selves keep showing me an earth flipped upside down. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I'm ready for it, right? If it happens, it happens. I do know that if it happens, I think I'm surviving it, which sucks. <sighs> why did I choose to survive this? I don't know. Certainly not so I could see fucking mankind. No, sir. Nope. Nope. No, I'm surviving this. I think because I've either been sentenced to it or I've earned the opportunity. You tell me. You're so smart. Okay. 59. It all started with sound. Boom. 
Yeah, I think everything that is began with the experience of sound, the vibration of sound. Sound. I think that's the, the, I think that is the granular element of fundamental reality, period. Oh, let there be sound. And I think sound is a manipulator of reality in ways we've never uncovered in the time I've spent on Earth. But I think we've uncovered it in other times on Earth. Entire patterns. 58, 58, 58, 58, says entire patterns that kaboom the world are, all right, what does that say? Are re, uh, oh man, I hate when I tear pages out because it just ruins the last like two words. Are re ushering? Are re, uh, suck, I gotta go find it. I gotta rip this one off. Why does this one get ripped off? Why does this one get off? Clumsy, clumsy, wasting your time. Oh my god, look how far I wrote that. <laughs> okay, entire. Entire? Oh, energetic patterns that kaboom the world are revealing themselves. Uh, yeah, that's all of it. How long would it take you to map the meta cycle of galactic? movement in galactic time across galactic space creating galactic ebb and flow of stored energy kinetic energy or both tripping across galactic reality sabam comes this big old shock of god knows what solar wind who knows what who knows fucking what we don't know and i'm not even saying brace for it fuck that if it's coming, it's coming. Who gives a shit? You're not going to survive it. Neither am I. But what I'm saying is, I do think someone, crop circles, maybe, is trying to show us some patterns that they know are happening, that they want us in on so that we don't go kaboom for no reason. Are we smart enough to listen? Are we smart enough to look? Are we cooperative enough, enough to look? Do we speak with enough clarity to declare what we are up to so that we can come together and then look? I don't know. Fifty-seven says the world food energy shortages are all manipulated by dipshits. <laughs> dipshits. They are, they are uh, manipulate shits. Oh, I understand them so much, though. I mean, once your life's about taking advantage, well, then you just start pushing that envelope to places where you can really take advantage. And if you're smart enough to get into the energy, the sort of high-end levels of population management manipulation shit, start playing those Hunger Games games, not the ones with the bow and arrow and fucking Katniss and those stupid games. No, the ones where you're turning people into the people that are willing to play those games. Hmm. Well, that's when manipulating people is really fun. Psychotic, fun, psychotic, hard to say. 56, I write out this, oh no, I wrote out this life plan and know a bit of what's next. Huh. That's awfully full of myself. But I have these dreams. Clearly I'm at a sort of sweet ass like light table where you just point your finger and it creates the patterns of what you're trying to present. <clears throat> it's fucking awesome. And I'm always seeing the same node. 
And I stopped having the dream because I know I can't do anything about it, right? Like, I'm in acceptance phase. That's what we're all in. I mean, not that we can't act. We're all acting. We're all... And, and I, you know, I don't know what the actions therein will be. But the cross note is written. All timelines converge now. And if it's happened, and the Mandela effect was the shift that shifted everybody over, well then... What's what's the hurdle? Something still has to has to ignite. There, there, the catalyst hasn't emerged. It wasn't Donald Trump. I don't actually think it's anything political. It's physical. Something happens. Something physical happens to the planet. I'll just leave it at that. I can't drive 55 is number 55. If that was a headline, I'd be like, fuck yeah, that's true. <laughs> I got so many speeding tickets in my life. I was such a fucking fast driver. I was terrible. I was terrible. I was the epitome of a fucking shithead who was late to something and didn't take enough time to get where he needed to go. And I was also the guy who at 2.30, 3.30 in the morning after dropping, say, 2,700 and a fucking craps fucking leak out, might be going 135, 140 down I-5. I wouldn't say that's out of bounds. I know I once made it from Seattle to Portland. Well, 20 minutes south of Seattle. For those of you familiar with the Muckleshoot Casino... To Portland in two hours and three minutes. I mean, if I'd have gotten pulled over, I'd have lost my license on the fucking highway. So, no, I can't drive 55, so I've stopped driving. I will not be a wreck in someone else's life because I'm an insolent driver. Won't happen. I wonder if insolent was usable there. That was a stretch. <laughs> no idea if that word is even appropriate. So, rather than sitting on my own fucking errors, like not being able to drive anything other than maniacally, 54 says, I already know there's more. Yeah, I got to 54 easily. I actually have the whole list written out. All of it. So I guess I did really prepare for this. And it says... Oh, 54, I already know there's more, like nobody's a whore. Okay, nobody's a whore, number one, especially you women. Sorry for you ever thinking that. If anybody's a whore, I am, but I'm not a whore, so you're not a whore. Nobody's a whore. We're not whores. You're just taught to think that. I mean, one of the things you have to ponder is you get to throw this meat suit on, and you get to fuck people. Pick your gender. I don't give a shit. But it is a connectivity unique in unique in existence. You think that's supposed to be locked into one person from approximately the age of 23.7 to the age of what? What do we live to? 77, 79, 81 now? <sighs> 60 years. With a, what, six year pre-game warm-up where you doink around in the back seat of a couple of cars? Seriously. Is that really what it's about? Nobody's a whore. 53! Believing in yourself proves to be all you need to know about fucking life on planet Earth. Well, that'd be a sweet headline. I wonder if that'd be immediately followed up with 52. The golden rule found unfallible by science. I don't know that there's much more to do than believe in yourself and follow the golden rule. Maybe I'm wrong. 51 says science found fallible through the golden rule being applied. <laughs> <sighs> yes, yeah, science. What the fuck? Isn't it time to actually let the scientific method sing? Are we not ready to grow up? I'm tired of being protected from the truth. Now I gotta go find 50.
No, I don't. I actually got smart and wrote that one here. Earth is a huge quarry. Huh. Well, that would explain the volcanoes being slurry pits. And why the Grand Canyon looks like it was fucking carved out. I find it hard to believe a river did that. <clears throat> don't you? No, you don't. Okay, well. We just see it differently, I guess. 49 says... Turns out I'm not crazy. Okay. All right. Oh. Well, that wouldn't surprise me. It would surprise probably everybody else listening. I tried to be crazy. I wanted doctors to tell me I was fucked up. I wanted to take a test that said, you should be in a padded room. I wanted to escape I wanted to be told, you don't have to take care of yourself, we'll do it for you. Or did I? You see, this world, it'll give you opportunities to get weak. And if you get weak in the wrong circumstance, you can really start to doubt yourself. Start to think that somehow you did something wrong. And sometimes you do something wrong. I might have really fucked up tonight. I don't really know yet. I kind of walked out on Thanksgiving. Well, we'll get to that one. It's further down the list. But, you know, or did I stand up for myself? You know what I'm saying? Like, such a stupid duality. Both are true. I was rude, and I was treated rudely, so what are you going to do about it? Well, we'll let that explanation fully flush itself out when we finally get to number 12. But until then, I'll just say that if it turns out I'm crazy, and it may, I've said before, I, I've got arguments, personal arguments, that I think say, yeah, you know what, if we put you in front of the board that decides the loony bin, they might actually throw you in. Agreed. It's possible. But then, we all have moments like that. I just think I have more than some, and I probably have fewer than others. Meaning, we all have moments like that, and I think I probably have more than some and fewer than others. Now, rather than being rude, I'm going to pause. Okay. Oh, and did I say what day it is? It's the 24th. It's 10 o'clock exactly, which is why I wanted to say, ooh, 24th, 10 o'clock. Uh, the 24th would be of the 11th month, that's November, which uh, makes it Thanksgiving, which also makes it the year 2022. That's the 22nd year of the 21st century, I think, about some dude who died. But then there's this whole thousand year thing that we're going to get to. I'm not even sure. So, whatever. We're just going to say, Happy Thanksgiving. 10 o'clock. Let's get this motherfucker going. Good. Uh, turns out I'm not crazy. Turns out I am crazy. Whatever. Neither headline would shock me all that much. 49 says, that was 49. 48 says, turns out the world is crazy. Uh, well, yeah, sure. I mean, shit, everything feels out of whack, doesn't it? Salvador Dali's more relevant than ever. Or, at least, some sort of melting clock metaphor feels relevant now. Alright, 47, Jesus Christ was a creation. Uh, it kind of feels that way. Gotta say, there's not a whole lot of historical shit about him. That would be number one. They should have planted more of that. But two... He's so much the amalgamation of every other goddamn historical prophet along the way. Whatever. Think what you want. He feels much more like a guy that somebody pitched to the Hollywood crew and the Hollywood crew thought, oh my god, he's like every prophet ever, all rolled into one, and he's white, and he's from the Middle East. We could turn him into a star. 46. Lily is my arch enemy. 46A, Lily is my guardian angel. 46B, Lily is just some psycho delusional schizophrenic who walks through my back door. Let's say those are very much still in pluck, so if the headline came out deciding it, I'd be interested. I don't know which one of those is true. So, yeah, wish, publish. I'm interested. Somebody figure that one out. 
45. Atrocities ranked 1 through 100. Number one would always be killing another human being through someone else's orders. Yep. Okay. I've never been... It's a battle. I've never been in the kind of violent situation that I thought somebody's life was on the line. Well, no, I take that back. That's not fair. The stupidest thing I've ever done in life. By far. I actually think that's true. When I was 17... Was I 17? I was only 16. When I was 16, after hitting a miserable chip shot on the ninth hole of a golf course while playing golf with my friends Greg and Matt, threw my golf club in disgust, <clears throat> and in such throwing, threw it a good, I'm going to guess, 40 feet, and hit my friend Matt square in the face. Right in the face with the fucking sand wedge. <clears throat> I hit him in such a place that I missed his eye, his jaw, his ear. I missed everything because I hit him in the puffy part of his cheek. And, uh, and it's the one guaranteed shudder I can produce if I need to feel a chill about myself and my actions is I can still visually watch that club take Matt straight in the face as he goes down, only to try to stand up in a stunned realization he's been struck to spit out a mouthful of blood and then collapse. The point is, of all the dumb things I've done in life, I've been lucky to own up to the fucking action in every single one of them. No one ever told me to do something. Then I followed through and realized afterward what I'd done. I've always been able to say, Yep, I fucking hit Matt Kurtz in the face with that fucking club. I did it. I did it. I did it. (sighs) Because I can't imagine what it would be like to be in a position to think, Holy shit, I wasn't even thinking about it and now that guy's dead. what can you do, right? I I don't judge you. I certainly am in no position to judge you. What I do judge is a world that has so much division that there's way too many of us that know what it's like to be ordered and to carry out the order of destroying another life. I threw that club at Matt Kurtz. I will forever be shamed by my action that day. But nobody told me to throw that club. Forty-four is the moon is hollow. The reflection of the black hole sun. Uh, Made of cheese. (laughs) Um, inhabited by multiple races? Listen, I like the moon is hollow because that's backed up by data. Yeah. Look it up. The rest of those sound a little crazy. That black hole sun reflection shit? I mean, even with that Russian video, what are you going to think? That's true? No way. 43... They zapped a hundred... Oh, they zapped a thousand years out of the history. <laughs> Feels that way, doesn't it? They just changed every 1941 to 941. Or, wait, did it the other way? I don't even know. Who cares? There's way too little stuff for 2,000 years of mankind's production. Do you know how much shit is in my house? And I'm not very productive. I just have a ton of shit. And I'm saying shit I kind of built and, you know, responsible for. Like, maybe clothing's a little easy to come by these days, so having a closet full of shit's a little unfair. But, I mean, seriously, I got other shit, too. I got, like, all these notebooks. I got all this, oh, God. 
I just accumulated a lot of shit. I'm one dude. History. 2,000 years of history. Okay, but we didn't have all the fucking shit we've got today. I agree. But we had some shit that we passed down for years, forever, forever. Yeah, but the fucking Crusades burned it all. No, they didn't. I mean, just think about the scale of atrocity against your own kind that you're talking about. What, we destroyed everything? Kind of feels that way. How much shit's older than 200 years, really, anyhow? Well, we've got these books. Really? How many of them? Besides the Dead Sea Scrolls, which, ah, two goat farmers found. What else we got? Got that devilly book. Yeah, that one. Okay, rant over. 42. Germs don't transmit diseases. 41. Viruses are BS. All right, look, the only evidence I bring to bear on this is the flu, transmissible, mucus study of the 19... 18 Spanish flu pandemic and how no results prove transmissible disease through germ contact. Look it up. It's fucking gross. But look it up. And then viruses are BS because never have we actually contained a live virus. We've only shown its effect in the aftermath, which in my opinion is us mistaking bacterial remnant for viral disease. Bullshit. In my opinion, that's actually pretty easy to see for a layman. All right, 40 says, we cannot sever our connection to the source. And you're an evolved soul just by being here. You're proving it. You're on Earth. Yeah, that's true. All right, 39, Disney is the evil media extension of the, insert your evil preference here, Illuminati? No. Um, the Scientologist? Maybe. Okay. Disney does feel a little creepy. <laughs> you know? Somehow. I'm just going to say. All right, 38. Oh, more? Disney's making us all okay with being gay? What? Is that true? Nah, if that was to show up tomorrow, I'd be like, bullshit. Wouldn't you? 37. Um, male fertility is down. Yeah, I saw that was down. That's concerning. 36. The rich keep getting richer. <laughs> well, what, that headline doesn't appear regularly enough? What does that got to show up for? Are we not on to that yet? All right, that was 36, 35. This just in. Between these two headlines, the rich got richer. What? We know. Quit rubbing it in our faces. Okay, 34. Um, 5G is too toxic for human consumption. We just don't know what to do about it yet. Oh, God, I hope not. There's so many of those 5G towers right in my neighborhood. There's like 30 of them. Like, I can probably pick out 16 from my window. They're fucking everywhere. All right, 33. Numerology is still not for me. Okay, I want to be into numerology somehow. But I just, uh, every time I go down even the top of that rabbit hole, I just want to jump right back out. Just feels concocted and stupid. But, synchronicity? And that, 333-1111, all that kind of shit. Fuck, man. When your life starts getting that pattern obsessively, that's freaky. So I can play that game. But the numerology stuff, it's never vibrated as anything but people being ping-ponging with their nerdiness. Hey, did I hit record or am I still paused? Nope, 3446. Is that numeral? Um, 32. Two, I meant memory lives in space-time, even in objects in space-time. I like this idea, and I'm not even sure it's wrong. I think it's right. Like, 
if you go to your elementary school playground, you will all of a sudden remember kids you haven't thought of in how long have you not been in elementary school. So where does that memory truly live? Could you have recalled the memory without walking back through the physical playground? Well, then does the playground hold the memory? I think that's actually one of the bigger mysteries of life. Okay, 31. Conscious experience is what's expanding the universe. Well, that'd be cool. I mean, that'd be really cool. Consciousness itself is what all that expansion is about. The more we understand and experience, the bigger the universe has to get to hold it as information. That would be phenomenal. That would be phenomenal. That would be phenomenal. Would 30 be phenomenal? 30 says, generational wisdom is settling. Okay, listen. I'm not one to tell the next generation shit. Do your thing, man. Figure it out. But the idea of seeing a generation going through something that you've already been through. In other words, when you hit 30 and have kids, you'll watch your kids go through enough of a generational gap from what you went through that by the time they're adults and the next generation's coming through, you'll see the whole game. And it is settling in ways that you don't understand is about to happen, especially as your kids are teenagers. Think about this. In 10 years, you're about to have the sort of epiphany that makes you wise beyond what you expect. Now, that's the kind of shit I think is worth sharing, right? So, there you go. All right, 29. 29, 29 was 29, 29 until I submitted it, which I thought honestly would make it 29, 30, but it made it 29, 28. I specifically cut it down to 29, 28 because it always adds a fucking second to 29. Oh, do you know how much I hate the nuance of modern technology sometimes? All right, 28. And if you don't understand that rant, well, I do have an episode called 2929. It happens to only be 2928. Duh. 28. Nations are simply created to make us want to murder and kill each other. I'm pretty sure that's right. Okay. Should we take a break? Should I go smoke some more? Um, of God's green earth. We're at 3805. Is that a number? Number? It's definitely a number. Wow, I almost hit my maximum pause time, but I didn't. 3817, 3818, 3819 says. Which lets me say crazy shit like number 27. We are being lied to, or we just simply don't know what happened to create the Sahara Desert. The reason I feel like the lied to part is appropriate, which it probably isn't, so sorry Egyptologists and whoever, but first of all, Egyptologists, you lie to us about everything, so my hesitancy about whether or not we're getting the truth on this is obviously earned. That said, is this a bridge too far? Is it? Is this the people living on the moon watching Earthlings because we're all psychotic nuclear weapon launching fuckfaces? I mean, most of the men. I don't really mean to pin that stuff on the women. But, <sighs> okay. When we dig in the Sahara, we find fucking crazy shit. That's number one. Number two, the Sahara is a huge anomaly on the world. Um, a sand desert. A sand desert. Sand. All sand. Sand. Where did it all come from? Sand. Simply answer that question. 26. They're lying to us about Antarctica. All right. All right. I don't mean to go down fucking toilet bowl road, right? This is just where people are like, okay, buddy, put you on the cover of the National Enquirer, the Bat Baby Beat, or whatever other lunatic asylum rag you can name. 
They're lying to us about Antarctica. Well, let me put it to you this way. <laughs> On what has everybody come to such quick agreement of such high significance as the treaty to treat Antarctica with complete gloves and hands-off approach in all circumstances other than the 75 bases that we have down there totaling about 3,000 people. In other words, if we could colonize the moon, for whatever reason we can't, but if we could, we'd have about the same number of people on the moon. So, clearly, one, nobody wants us on the fucking moon, and two, nobody wants us in Antarctica. The question is, Who's telling us to stay the fuck out? And why did all countries agree to it immediately? 25. Greco-Roman architecture is goddamn everywhere. Yeah, it is. It's not Greco-Roman architecture. It's the architecture of either the Atlanteans or the... Sum the not the Sumerians. What's the old, old ones? Those, uh, The ones in the Vish v Vimanas... What were they? Feed, wake up. What were they? Damn, it's still sleeping. Um, the Anunnaki's? Who knows? Who made all that goddamn architecture? Anybody? Anybody got an answer? 24. The Romans are made up. <laughs> I'm starting to... That's totally just me. But I've never really bought into the Romans. I think they're fake. 23. NDs are totally a thing. Oh, yes. Comments below. 22. Why are our astronauts in such pain during their press conference after they get back from the moon? And corollary, why did Neil Armstrong become a recluse? I mean, just to answer those two questions. 21. Gambling, among other things, proves I came here to end up on my zero karma tender. Whoa! Good thing that wasn't on fire. I mean, it wasn't going to be on fire. That'd be like saying, good thing my bottle of rain wasn't on fire. Well, why would it be on fire? It wouldn't. Then why'd you, okay, can we move on? The, the creepy thing... Creepy? No, not creepy. It's not creepy at all, actually. It's it's odd to to what level the knowledge against your life, especially retrospectively, and think maybe there's an effect you can still have on the balance going back into time. Karma is a tricky motherfucker, but I'm aware now that I'm in this reality with the exact outcome, imprint, inevitability of leaving zero positive and zero negative karma. I'm on a zero karma tender. And gambling is one of the places that finally revealed itself. But it's also come clearly in my dreams. It's been a point of emphasis in some of my dream exchanges with some of my wiser selves. But that doesn't mean it's here to be abused. In fact, it's the opposite. It's here to be respected. And in such respect will offer me opportunities in which to walk people out of karmic pickles themselves, which is truly the gift I've never used. So I look forward to that one. 20. My childhood... Um, what does that say? My childhood situation was perfect. It was. Now, my childhood wasn't perfect, but I was dropped down into goddamn CIA mindfuck land. Now, I'm not saying the CIA fucked with me and that I had a mindfuck of a childhood, but if I were to have an implanted childhood, the one I have would be goddamn close to what you'd implant if you were trying to give somebody the rosy beginning that everybody would wish for. I had it. Or did I? Because there were two weird experiences in my childhood. One was a trip to Boys Town. 
that my football team made in the seventh grade. Yep, the 45 of us got on a bus and traveled to Boys Town, New Mexico, or New Mexico, Boys Town, Nebraska, where we slept in a gymnasium on mats and sleeping bags that we all brought. But some of us, like four or five of us, got taken out of that gymnasium at like midnight. I'm not fucking around either. This happened. I was awake the whole time. I couldn't sleep in a room like that because I was a terrible snorer, so I'd always try to be the last person to sleep so that I wouldn't keep other people awake around me. So I was awake the whole time. I don't know if I slept a wink that night, because what the fuck were those kids doing being taken out of the fucking gymnasium? It was weird. It wasn't rape little boys weird. It was just weird. Were they getting to do something special? Like, I didn't fucking know. They, they were doing something we weren't. And two or three of them, I know one of them was only gone an hour. He was back shortly because he was the kid closest to me. But the other three or four, I'm not sure at this point how many there were, but there were definitely, I think it was four total, including the kid next to me, or it was four more, and he was the fifth. But it doesn't matter. Nothing ever was spoken about it or anything. Nothing. But when you look at the kids chosen, I'll just say they were the vulnerable kids among us, period. So I had that experience at Boys Town. It was a weird one. And uh, that doesn't mean anything about anything except even in idyllic childhood situations. If you were to relive them, I'll bet there's a lot more filth than you knew. 18 is the only other weird experience that I had. And to say I had, it's a little unfair. Because I only saw the back end of the white van once. But my friends, Mark and Richie, rarely got involved with anything that would be considered zany. McLaren and Robinson, fuck. They were the definition of zany. Mestic, not so much. And those were basically the five guys. And Jeff Dalton, six. Who were the carriers of the white van story. And there was a day when a white van left our schoolyard in a hurry. And that's what they said. There's the van. There's the van. So I don't disagree that a white van was in the neighborhood. But, you know, we bought fireworks from a white van when we were 11 or 12. You know, we fucking, uh, every white van was a white van looking to diddle kids, right? But when the, when Mark and Richie get involved, well, they're a couple of the straightest arrows in the whole goddamn neighborhood. It's like having Dale involved, right? There's no lying going on. Not in that group. And they were spooked. Something happened coming home from football practice between those five guys and a white van. What it was, I don't know, but they were all spooked. Spooked enough to get us involved to tell us to fucking be on the alert. So what happened to them? Who knows? But they claim they barely got away with being fucking kidnapped. So for the next couple of months, looking out for a white van was part of our modus operandi. But there you go. That's all the weirdness from my childhood. That's it. That's all of it. Literally, that's it. That's all of it. Rest of my childhood was a Leave it to Beaver episode that they rewound because it was too boring and too idyllic. Twice I used that word. Appropriately, I believe. Anyhow, the world's not really a dangerous place. But there are dangerous situations in which if your spider sense is tingling, be smart, right? Um, 17. The reason you have to use Bluetooth is for ID and tracking. Or insert your Android feature here. Well, yeah. But would they tell us that? All right, 16. Marijuana doesn't kill people. Including those two kids in Arkansas. Huh. Well, 
Something killed those kids. I mean, kids don't just fucking sleep on train tracks. I was always a choker. Seriously. Number 15. This is appropriate, because I was also number 15 in my athletic endeavors. And no, I was no goddamn... Huh. Why does he have to be a chief? But if you're not a fan of Patrick Mahomes, you don't really like sports. He makes football fun to watch. By himself. <laughs> How many people do that? I mean, oh, football can be such a drudgery. Especially if you watch the Broncos. But, that aside, I was the anti-Patrick Mahomes. Put a ball in my hand and I'd fumble as quickly as I could fucking get a chance to do it. And that's not just sports. I mean, my big choke in the spelling bee, I've been through that one before. My chokes across time are legendary. In my own mind. But, in so many ways, I, uh, I got over that so easily by just stopping letting myself believe it. And I have so overperformed the moment since then that this is just one of those ways that I want anybody who feels they are destined to always blankety blank when the blankety blank is hitting the blankety blank. No, you're not. <laughs> no, no, you're not. Reinvent yourself. Do it in your dreams first if you have to. But you can do it in reality pretty quick, too. Go out, practice, gain some confidence, and just tell yourself, this time, the story ends this way. And watch. It will. So, I was always a choker until I wasn't. How about you? What were you always until you weren't? Were you the kind of person who would blow Thanksgiving just because, oh, enough's enough. Listen, I've earned the punching bag moniker of the family. I'm not going to get into it, nor does it even matter. But I've somewhat earned it. If not flat out, grabbed it like a bull grab horn or some other metaphor that I can't quite enunciate. Point is, if you're going <clears> to <throat> act like a jackass, well then, being treated as the jackass in the family comes with the territory. But there are times when the family is just doing what it does, when uh, I just don't enjoy friction. And if people are going to make things testy that are just not of any <laughs> relative value, like uh, the procedural, uh, sequential um, seriousness of a game of apples to apples with five people at a table. I don't know. I lost my shit tonight. I'm not going to get into it because it's family stuff, and that's just not fair. But I walked out of Thanksgiving because I really didn't want to sit around for another two and a half hours and have to act as something other than myself, which is what was being asked of me. And I wasn't trying to specifically outrageously act as myself. That's not even the point. It's just that I somehow have a capability of setting my mother off in ways I don't understand. So when it's happening, and it's happening on a holiday, well, frankly, I'd rather just jump overboard and swim to shore. So I did. The downside is, for whatever reason, two people came to the door to try to convince me otherwise, and I told them both to get the fuck away. <laughs> I'm over it. I'm over being told that I am um, too energetic, too boisterous, too much of a presence to have around. If I am, I'm no longer coming to events. I don't care. It's not important to me. What's more important to me is to act as I am. And that may sound like a spoiled brat trying to explain that he's a spoiled brat. I see that point of view. I see it easily. But I've seen it so easily that I've somewhat talked myself into believing that that's really the point of view that's valid here. And it's not. Sometimes it takes you until 53 to declare, I'm going to stand up for myself against all odds. And some of that is especially overcoming the nuclear family. Leaving it at that, I already 
apologize to the people whose night I wrecked that didn't deserve it, and I will have conversations with the people whose nights got wrecked that did and why. And until I follow those up, there's nothing more to say here. But I kind of blew up Thanksgiving tonight. So, if that's the headline tomorrow, John kind of blew up Thanksgiving. I bet. Fuck, how'd they find out? That was quick. <sighs> I'm probably going to regret something tomorrow. But tonight, this is number 13, by the way. In other words, I know there's something I'm not regretting now that I will regret tomorrow because I'm just a little thick-headed and it takes me 24 hours of going, oh, that was stupid. I didn't even think about that. When it comes to all this kind of shit that I'll have tomorrow, some epiphany of self, um, what, self-referentials? I don't know. In other words, I'll see something I did that was even stupider than I know now. But the one thing I realized I fucking did, my sister made Thanksgiving tonight. Maybe for the first time. I'm not positive on that, but definitely for the first time at this level. And I walked out on that. She didn't deserve that. So I wrote a note of apology. I biked over to her house and I taped it to her front door. Because she didn't deserve that. And I don't know who else I'll have to bike over and write a note of apology tomorrow, but they say better to ask for forgiveness than permission. I don't know if that's always true. Okay, number 12. We can all be better, right? Even you, CIA. Woo. Okay, CIA, that was a joke. Uh, you can't joke with the CIA. I know, I know, I know. Sorry, CIA. All right, how are you going to be? I haven't gotten into this one in a while, so why not finish my... I mean, the 11 were kind of all written out early, so how are you going to be? We can all do better. I hate the phrase, how you been? It's a phrase about which you have nothing to say. How you been is how you been. Right? What are you going to do about it? How you been? Well, I've been a little disruptive with the family and probably regretful beyond the pale of which I currently am considering myself. But I'll let you know tomorrow more on that. That's how I've been. How are you going to be? <sighs> are you asking me that now? Fuck. Well, I guess my answer to that would be a kinder person. Because everything I did tonight was in the vein of being unkind. I hate when I'm unkind to my family. No one in my family deserves anything but kindness from me. <sighs> I guess that's one of the regrets I'll have tomorrow. Anyhow, the idea of how you're going to be forces you to think about what you're going to do next. Whether or not you're equipped to do it, and if you need help, do you have one last chance to ask? How are you going to be? Well... I'm going to be apologetic, I'm going to be understanding, I'm going to be forgiving, I'm going to be understanding, I'm going to be kind, and then I'm going to be understanding. And I'll be a good listener the whole time. How are you going to be? All right, number 11. This one does go to 11. But where 11 goes to, we do not know, because 11 probably... What is 11 over here to? 60? Oh, 11. Says, Epstein, not the one I went to high school with, but that Jeffrey dude, is not just unsuicided. Mofo is alive! Alright, come on. Don't we all know Jeffrey Epstein is not just... <sighs> dude is totally... Probably sitting in that mansion down in fucking Cabo or wherever the fuck it was. Anyway, yep, Epstein's alive. Shock. Are you? Really? Would you be shocked? Would you be shocked? Headline, Epstein found alive. <gasps> yeah, that's not even shocking. But this one, I think, would shock most people. So, da 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 Ten! Even Phoebe got up for ten. The Pyramid... Is 452,000 years old. 
You got that right. That one. Come on, that one shocked you. Okay. But that is nothing. Oh! It's not a yawn of disinterest. That's a yawn of fatigue. Because that is nothing compared to number nine. Well, number 10, 452,000 years old. Did you know that? Number nine. There was a giant cataclysm, an earthwide, not meaning giants made this cataclysm. I mean, there was an earthwide cataclysm. And it happened eh, three to 450 years ago. Wiped this all out. Basically, they hit the reset button. Who are they? Good question. Number eight. Humans are millions of years old. I know, that one's up there with that 450,000 year pyramid thing, right? What are you talking about? That's impossible. Seven. Clones live among us. Okay, do we need to look further than Joe Biden for this one to be true? Six. The universe is trillions of years old. Get used to it, buddy. Five. Dinosaurs are BS and a myth. Am I rolling too fast through this top five for y'all? Probably. But now you're pushing me off into nonsense land, so let's just finish it here with four. What was four? Four is... Um, Earth is, in fact, a prison planet. Ha-ha! Suckers. Weren't ready for that one, were you? Three. We are all infinite beings of love. That's true. These next two, I have no fucking clue. But three is true. Is two? Well, I say in two, if the headline tomorrow read, guess what? John's an NPC. I am? Fuck. Kind of knew it all along. Seems to fit. Except the whole quest to fucking unwind the simulation itself, right? Like, how can an NPC be interested in the purpose of life? It can't. Even if it's programmed in, then you don't program in the doubt in its own existence. Then you give it purpose to seek out something. There's no programming that can program in self-doubt. You earn it. And then you climb back out of it. And you realize, no, I am the active agent in this game. Which leads you to number one. The whole fucking thing is just for my benefit. I'm the only one wearing the helmet. And I'm about to wake up Arnold Schwarzenegger style. 